Way to fade that out. Uh, what's up? What's up, stream. Uh, so last week, week, I get to hear an echo of everything I'm saying. It's very disorienting. I hadn't considered that. I hadn't considered. That. Um. So last week I had a lot of like technical issues, I guess, but it kind of worked out. So this week I decided to try a, a bunch of different things. Bunch of is gonna be uh fun to figure out and uh, uh works or not um yeah we have some interesting stuff i guess today um this one is a two-parter so today's stream and thursday's stream will be will be to uh last week where it was kind of like you know, two parts of the um, and, and I'll talk about that in a second. In terms of looking forward, I have a lot of things or a lot of things around planned. Um, that I'll probably talk about maybe next week, starting next week. Um, basically, I have some plans. Basically, I have to in the near future. Uh, rolling out more things uh, other than the stream. Maybe a little bit this month, but more towards June. Um, so, um, <clears throat> God, it's going to take a second to get used to here to hear and delay. Um, <clears throat> basically, so I wanted to, I want to regulate the volume of everything more. Um, so I have, hold on. Show on. Uh, oh god. So I have Cubase open. Open. I have two tracks. One is just where the microphone is going to, and I'm going to have a compressor and a noise gate on it, so that um, you can hear my clearly and without getting a bunch of noise. Um, but but OBS is picking up the sound from my computer. Um. And there's a delay because of the way I, I, I was trying to do it with um, um, I have an Akai interface and I was trying to use their driver uh, in Cube. Just last second, I couldn't figure out how to get it to work with OBS. OBS. Um, so now I because there's a the, there's a more latency with well maybe latency if I can get rid of some of this latency. Latency, latency. Uh, good. Sample size. Whatever, I, whatever. I'm hearing myself in echo for an hour. Um, so that, and I also have a piano VST. Because today we're gonna be gonna be come up with some two fives, um, two five licks. 
So basically, um, when it comes to learning jazz vocabulary or preparing yourself for uh, improvisation, um, the the very ba most basic principle in jazz, like going back to the earliest times, is literally just like like playing the chord tones, um, and the sort of mo and the most basic fundamental cadence is the two five to the one. Um, Space, so if we're in C, um, C major, uh, C major, so two chord would be um, and then G dominant, and then back, back to C. Um, and so I ha I busted out my, my MIDI keyboard. Which I haven't used in quite some time, maybe like two years. Maybe like just, uh, released my last original song, like two years old song. Um, because I was trying to figure out how I was gonna have something to listen to and reference into it. Because uh, I'm approaching this like I listen to jazz. I've learned some solos. I've improvised some, but it's not. But it's oh, you guys here, you guys the echo as well. That's unfortunate. That um, let me see what I can do about that. What I can do about. It. Let me get this. Check, check, check. Let's see. I'm going to talk for a five seconds for a five minutes. It actually does something. Um. Might be something. Yeah, if this doesn't work, I could always just go back to using the, uh, the microphone. It'll just be a little quieter. Um, is it still funky? It's still repeating. I'm gonna keep talking. Let me know if it's still repeating. It's still. Let me try changing. Driver. You said it's still echoing. Well, okay. I'm just going to give me a second. Shiggity check, 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 check. Okay. So I'm just going to switch to uh, direct microphone input. And I guess I'll just have to speak up. I don't have the benefit of compression. Uh, I'm going to have to figure that out for Thursday because I was just like thinking of that. Uh, I was planning. I spent like the last hour and a half doing stream prep. And I was like, oh, I got to work on the sound. Then I realized I was like, wait a minute, how am I going to actually get you guys to hear uh or for me to get to actually hear the chords so i can you know <laughs> write lines um 
so yeah um anyway as i was saying busted out the midi midi keyboard um did a little bit of googling because i don't i'm not really a piano player i had to you know take class piano when i was in music school uh but it hasn't gotten you know i haven't gotten much better since then um and i don't have a lot of like formal training in terms of jazz harmony um, because I was a classical major Um, mostly it's been YouTube and just kind of picking stuff up as I go but yeah so for me there there are a lot of ways to as I was saying there's a lot of ways to uh, internalize vocabulary so that you can um, cool thank you Uh, so there's a lot of ways to internalize vocabulary so you can um, become more adept at improvising obviously as i mentioned you know learning solos transcribing um just doing the theory groundwork and and really uh internalizing changes and common changes and kind of knowing the uh the uh how the sausage is made in terms of you know how to understand what is happening if you see a series of chords be like oh i'm in this key i could use these scales you know um but I'm going to try something that I haven't tried um, just because it seems a little more interesting maybe, um, which is just kind of going by instinct and then uh, after the fact going back and being like, okay, what do I have? So I'm going to take some really, really basic, as I mentioned, two five is sort of, two five one is sort of the most basic cadence that you have uh, in, in sort of Western music in general. Um, and so I'm going to take, you know, we'll do a few different licks in C major. Maybe we'll get a few in C minor and then we will move on to something a little more, uh, uh, complicated than that. We'll see how long this takes. Uh, I haven't like tried out this system yet. So, um, hopefully this setup works, especially on stream. Um, but yeah, so I'm gonna just kind of play through, you know, I'm gonna start C major, we'll do, oh, hold on. So we'll do, so we'll do. And we'll play that a few times and I'll try to think of something. Oh no, the typo is, is, is just for fun personality um uh so yeah we'll we'll start super basic in c um and i have let me show you my screen view you're gonna see obs and it's gonna look crazy um so i have mu score open um so obviously c major in concert is a uh, d major on a b flat instrument so i'm gonna be writing for b flat trumpet uh that's what I play um, so I'm just gonna kind of see what comes to me and um, we'll figure it out together so why don't we try um, so we're in C And obviously I'm going to be sort of influenced by the voicing that I pick. Um, someone who's more of an actual pianist or someone who actually has some uh, stronger conception of uh, voicing and uh, harmony would probably pick different voicings than me. I'm picking really simple three note voicing, one and then three and seven. Um, so the sort of open sound is probably going to influence melodic choices that I make, but I'll try to... I'll try to um, look past that, I guess. So let's see. So I'm hearing one, six, seven, five, at least in the key of D. Um, So we'll go to new score. I'm going to treat these as full bar. Usually I'll hear 
half note two, half note five, and then you know the one chord for a measure. But I'll I'll flesh this out into or yeah, I'll start with uh, each each chord getting a full measure so I can sort of think about it more. So one, in the key of D, so on trumpet that'd be E. Ah, oh, Jesus. Um, oh no. <laughs> uh, let me, no, it's fine. So, something a little different not just do the same figure over and over. actually you know what I'm, I'm hearing this lick as just a half note on the D minor so I'll go to G for the next oh that's wrong so uh, oh, mm, oh. Key of G. Uh, oh. Which is A on trumpet. Oops. Oops. Transposing. Um. Um, so if we're in D, then that would be B. So we have. Jesus. That's fine. There's nothing particularly interesting or special about that. All the notes are in the key of of uh, C, concert C. Um, so why don't we try something? Um, we'll start on a different note. So I started on uh, the one of of the of D. So why don't I just pick a different uh, a different note, and maybe we could think about um, notes that are in the other keys, not necessarily just in C. So you have D and G. Um, maybe we can borrow. Um, well, let's say for G, for instance, maybe we can steal a. Hmm. Let's see.
Oops. Hello. So you <laughs> get to watch me try and uh, suss these things out. Um, maybe I can just throw in like a a stock lick while I'm sitting here musing. Uh, so pretty s stock lick that I picked up. That's again sort of pretty uh, straightforward. Nothing too. Um, Mind blowing and compelling. So let's it's just outlining the chord. So this other one is just kind of outlining the actual chords. So we'll start on just playing a s straight up D minor seven. Come on. Oh, sorry. Let me switch back. And then going to the uh, G minor. Whoops. No, stop it. Yeah. Uh. Oh, maybe. Why not? about that <laughs> that's interesting enough all right just do a fun enclosure so what I was what I was uh, gonna do um, so basically for D playing D outlining D minor 7 and G7 uh, and just basically playing all those notes. So, the one and the seven, and then. Outlining the uh, C major, but that's interesting, right? That. Except with that uh, A flat. It's almost like borrowing from like C minor, maybe. Context. That would be um, flat nine, G seven flat nine. Yeah, that's like taking that from uh, uh, C minor and then going back to C major. It's kind of wild. gonna be a straightforward approach I just kind of accidentally because I was trying to change something in muse score um, 
made it more interesting. And in that was case, it was like not necessarily, uh, I guess it was a strange combination of following my ear and then justifying it uh, after the fact. Um, I can do some other weird things. Um, let's see. What other sort of keys can I borrow from? Uh, I mean, I could throw in an F sharp um, to lead to the fifth. So I could do sort of like a five of five. So do like a D major. shoehorn in that F. I could start on the F. F sharp, I should say. Um, um, so... Oh, that's why I was like, why does that sound wrong? I forgot, I'm like, that's not on the key. It's the uh, the uh, half step change. Be flat. Where would that be coming from? I guess C minor again. That'd be interesting. Continue to borrow from other other keys. That E flat not in the key. to um, F natural. Nice and simple after all the other. So I'm gonna go back through. Um, so we have first approach, which is just kind of um, sort of similar shape that kind of outlines the uh, 
some of the chord tones. the one where we borrowed from C minor, took that A flat, so we have spice um borrowing that f sharp from g then a d major chord Over. and then g with flat nine uh flat nine in the uh i guess it'll be sharp five Almost the <laughs> Wait, which one? You could just, you know, you could use the chat instead of texting me. Apparently, one of these sounds very similar to um, Rite of Spring. Which one is it? Well, now I'm going to be thinking about Rite of Spring. <laughs> anyway. Um, so yeah, there's that. Maybe, maybe it'd be more compelling, uh, more compelling ideas if I put it in this sort of context. So this is like not a bad exercise. The last one. She's, my girlfriend is texting me about Rite of Spring. I'm trying to think about, I'm trying to, um... Yeah. I'm thinking of like another piece entirely. Like now that you brought it up, I'm like, wait, how does Rite of Spring go again? I can only think of the bum 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 part. I'm like completely blanking on the uh, opening bassoon solo. Um, but uh, yeah, this is like not a bad exercise. Um, this would be good to do if you just do like I guess for some like if you're doing like active listening you're really like listening to someone's solos or some tunes or whatever I mean if you have the uh, experience to be like hey I know what chord that is what kind of chord that is I know what kind of changes those are what kind of progression that is um, I know which you know, scale degrees or chord tones or however you want to put it, uh, which ones are being hit as the changes go by. And you could just kind of like see it out like that. Um, for me, since I haven't necessarily uh, done that kind of legwork and I haven't like melded my mind or molded my mind into that kind of um, thinking that way, for me, it's mostly like a sort of like a color thing where it's like, oh, it sounds in or it sounds out in a certain way or like, yeah, maybe I can pick up this scale or I can sort of pick up like the way the interplay between the me the, the melody lines and the, and the and the um, comping underneath. Um, but this is a way to just sort of like immediately 
see, you know, if you're hearing your head and you're like, oh, I'm not really sure what, in terms of the analysis, um, what it is that I'm hearing, uh, then this is a good way to sort of being like, oh, that's what I'm hearing. I'm hearing, you know, this um, raised third, if I was in D minor, uh, in the key of C, and that's what, that's what it sounds like. Um, and so you're hearing sort of both, you can break it down in terms of both um, uh, the relationship to the bigger picture key um, and the, I guess, the, the actual intervals that you're choosing. So it's like, oh, I have a minor second here. Oh, I have a major third here, so on and so forth. And what that sounds like, or, um, you know, if you're in D, D minor, it's like, oh, that's, this is the third, or this is the seventh, or whatever, and what that um, sounds like. Um, is this exercise, I, saw, um, I think it was Jazz Duets on YouTube, who was just kind of like, had this exercise where it's like, I'm gonna land on the second of every chord as the, as the changes go by. I'm gonna land on the third, the seventh, et cetera. Um, oh, thank you. I like how everyone's leaving as I'm talking about <laughs> trying to think about the, the theory and stuff like that. Um, Cause that's basically what this is just sort of an exercise for to kind of go beyond just sort of like the most um, unexamined way of thinking of it. What you're hearing in your head is sort of like actually understanding um, what it is you're hearing. So why don't we continue? Maybe I'll do like one more. Um, and then maybe I'll try minor. We'll see if I can figure that out. Um, so we have... Oops. Uh, borrowing from C minor again, so we're making it bluesy. So in the key of D, we have um, four, five, seven, flat nine. Um, cool. Make it a little bluesy, that's fine by me. So four. Blah, 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 blah. Mm -hmm. F natural. I'm treating it like a this one I guess in my head I'm hearing it as a full measure time since I took those piano classes. I keep wanting to hear that 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 uh, A flat. That's not what I'm hearing. Cool. Um, that is three five in the key of G. 
some other chromaticism so maybe no yeah why not Oh, I just realized I saw the camera on me. So you see my face looking down at the piano. Um, fun to watch. mind trying to <laughs> transpose no that's wrong no that's why there we go um so Okay, so that one's a little more, uh, maybe more exciting than some of those other ones. So we, this one we are um, borrowing from C minor again, sort of giving it the blue sound with that um, flat three. Um, and here we have that A flat again, uh, written B flat for the trumpet. Um, the A flat again, sort of also borrowing from the uh, C minor, but we're kind of treating it more like a passing tone uh, off the beat, just leading to the uh, to bridging the uh, the um, the nine and the one in the key of G, um, and then just sort of outlining the uh, the third and the, and the seven as we resolve to back to C. Um, so yeah, cool. Um, so right. So this is why, like for me, like um, actually, when I when I go and I like try to play with, um, so if I'm if I'm playing like in an actual group, big band or combo or whatever, and I could sort of vibe with the other players. Um, so it'll it'll feel like faking it sometimes but it's sort of like yeah i can i can come up with things that um sound right and i'm like i can play in the key and i can understand like okay these are the notes that i'm playing to play in the key but it's sort of like a little bit of or a lot of bit of faking it 
kind of where you're just kind of going with the vibe and not necessarily like I'm not taking you on this journey with the melody I'm not really leading you through these changes I'm not really playing the chord tones just kind of playing in the key not necessarily playing wrong notes but just kind of not really doing um, the best job of coming up with these idiomatic lines on the spot because I haven't necessarily done the work of getting the vocabulary under my fingers and um, exp and analyzing um, you know what makes these things work um, so when it comes to like playing with like iReal Pro or playing with like the Abersol tracks which you know I've I've got a couple books and you know you could find a few of those tracks on um, like on YouTube or whatever but those are way those backing tracks are way better than anything on like iReal Pro or something like that where you just have like a computer algorithm coming up with weird voicings um, for the chords that are like super uninspiring um, but so that's why I'm just kind of forcing myself to sort of um, really own what I'm thinking and like actually understand what uh, uh, is going on in my head and sort of getting this sort of abstract stuff out the the analytical part out um, so I can understand maybe what I'm hearing so it's like oh if I hear something like that in the future I can be like oh that's what they're doing that's the flat third in the key of C or um, it would be uh, it's flat nine we're playing D on the two chord that flat nine um, so for these streams uh, so my my uh, I guess goal or whatever you call it my plan today come up with some of these licks maybe I'll come up with other ones off stream where I have more time to think about it and come up with things that are more interesting um, but this is just kind of me like going through the process trying to figure it out while I'm talking in front of the camera um, so get some licks together and then actually go through on Thursday stream and actually practice them on the instrument getting them under my fingers memorizing it and actually transposing it and try to get you know all 12 keys because um, that is the goal if you really really want to internalize something is to to get it in any key um, then it'll become more automatic sort of like how I learned all my major scales when I was in high school because that was sort of like an assignment that was given to us um, and it just started with the pattern of um, well whole whole <laughs> Hold on. Whole, whole, half, whole, whole. <laughs> I have to think about it because I don't think about the intervals so much when I'm playing it uh, in context. And I haven't taught in a while, so I haven't had to teach any kids how to play a major scale. Um, but, uh, uh, you know, learning it just by the um, breaking it up into its fundamental parts. And then after a while, it's just like, oh, it's D major, it's C major, it's G major. I understand the key signature, I understand like different scale patterns in those keys and I've internalized each key and so like if I hear something and I want to transpose it or if I read music and I have to transpose then it's a little bit more automatic uh, once I've done that work. Um, so this is me stalling so I don't have to figure out how to play minor chords. Um, so again for me not being a uh, a pianist of any measure and not being you know I'm like a depending on the scenario I'm a passable jazzer I'll say or I can fake it enough um, the major the major two fives are fairly easy the minors are where it gets a little more interesting because you have a lot more options it's major it's like there's only really one kind of major um, but minor there's you know you have a few options you can play different modes. I mean, you can play different modes of the major scale as well. But um, in jazz, I find that um, when it comes to minor stuff, there's it gets a little more interesting, I guess. Um, especially when we're talking about two fives, because um, you're gonna be like, oh, is this gonna be diminished? It's gonna be minor, flat nine, flat five, half diminished, whatever. How are you gonna approach it? Harmonic minor. Um, I don't sub, etc. Um, which I guess you can do in major too. Um, but 
I guess I'll I'm literally just gonna steal this voicing from thejazzpianosite.com 2-5 in um, C minor with um, uh, think of it in uh, harmonic C harmonic minor so that that would be the raised seventh versus the na natural seventh or flat seven whatever you want to call it um, so um, and then resolving on a C minor major seven which is interesting maybe I'll change that last last one so uh, it would be Oh, oops, I didn't change the... Oh, no, that's fine. So... Although C minor major 7 is a really cool sound. Very, um... I don't know. Especially when it's that really simple, you know, root voicing. It's like suspense. What's gonna happen? And then that's the end of the episode when the guy dies or whatever. Um, so I guess I'll steal that. Maybe not the voicing, but the um, basic um, minor seven with the flat five. Uh, so. Sounds so diabolical. Um, this might be a better one to come up with something more interesting. There's a lot more tension and uh, intrigue there. Let me go back to uh, Muse Score and see what we can. I'm gonna go ahead and change the key signature so I don't have to think about it. So C minor, D minor. That's uh, F. Oh wait, and did I just do a weird, did I mess with my mind by transposing again? C minor, uh, buh, 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 E flat. There we go. I was, about to, I was about to mess myself up by trying to transpose when I, when I don't have to transpose. Um, so, um, let's play this a few times. So what is that? Oh, it's just the one. Put that on the downbeat. Kind of outlining that chord. Why not? So starting on the one. Hitting that um, uh, flat six in D, right? No. Again, doing weird transposition. Um, flat five, or raise four, however you want to think about it. I guess we flat five. Um, da, da, right? Am I am I am I confusing myself in my transposition again? No, that's an A flat. I'm looking at so that'd be flat five. Just 
going to wing it, go with whatever my first instinct is, even if it's not particularly interesting. E flat, just on the scale. Instead of just landing on the root like some kind of schmuck. Oh yeah, I forgot that the Ray 7 is not going to be in the key signature. Right, just go ahead and avoid that tonic at all costs. So we have... Starting to feel out the C minor, feel out these changes. Um, let me save real quick. Yas. Um, what if I did um, a little um, so how would I voice if I wanted to do Instead of uh, the G7, if I wanted to do like a C sharp diminished or something, could I get away with that? So if I'm going from here and I wanted to go C sharp, so it would be. Seven, maybe. So, um, why don't I just like Is this too big for my brain? It might be. Um, <laughs> uh, this might be too big for my brain at the moment. It's not like I don't, I've never like read about tritone sub and like tried to understand it. Um, oh, is that it? Is that why I'm losing my mind and I'm just doing it wrong? 
Um, I'm trying to recall information that I like. Now I'm, now I'm losing everybody. I'm trying to talk about the tritone subs. When I don't know uh, what I'm doing. I mean, I've looked it up before. I've understood it to some degree before. I've never had to like apply it um, in front of people. Um, at least not in this way. So it would be... And then... Would everything just shift down? Be two, so C sharp. Would be dominant, maybe? So. That doesn't seem right. Well, I don't think I'm going to figure that out in front of you guys. So, um, let's see. I mean, it doesn't help that I'm like looking at a, I think, you know, for a lot of these things, it's sort of like the way we think of harmony and everything is very keyboard based. Um, and I can sort of envision the keyboard and understand things in that way. But, um, I mean, the first instrument I learned was trumpet. And then after that was guitar. So I use guitar, especially a lot of my songwriting stuff, but not like that's necessarily going to help me right now. Um, but uh, certainly scrambles my brain to try and um, think of things in terms of the keyboard, even though it's very clear when you have keys to look at. Um, if you're trying to like figure out different um, coordination things, like actually playing it and things like that. Um, it's weird and strange. It's hard to understand. So maybe I won't mess with that. Maybe I'll just continue to see where um, the spirit, oh. So. So borrowing the uh, regular nine from D minor um, instead of using the uh, flat nine, which would be in the key of C minor, uh, and a little bit of a syncopation. Uh, I guess in my head I'm hearing this as a full bar for each measure. So why don't I just do that? And that'll be a dotted, right? Dotted quarter on the uh, E natural outside of the key. And then just kind of descending down the scale. No. E, D. Mm -hmm. Whoops. No, oh, I forgot to change back my camera. Hello. Da -da. A flat. Mm -hmm. 
Why not? Uh, hit that harmonic minor sound. Mm. Whoops. And that's uh, B natural. go with this well, I kind of switch gears huh bring that uh, flat seventh in Pretend like I'm going to go to minor <laughs> or major. Fifth, why not? Um, how's that sound? Hold on, Mu score is getting ahead of me. So we have. Kind of interesting, right? We got this little landing on the this landing on the fifth sounds kind of lame. If I was continuing on and just holding on the fifth and then like doing a lick out of that, that might be more interesting. But um, I do like the um, borrowing the uh, natural nine from D. Instead of having the E flat, having E natural. What if I what if I pretended I was gonna go to C major? Um, that'd be a wild note to land on, wouldn't it? If I land on an E natural. Um, Playing on the keyboard doesn't sound too crazy. Uh, mm, maybe we can come with one more and then call that a stream. How about it? Um, look at how long it takes me to just to come up with like five licks that all kind of sound the same. 
Um, if I was going off of a, say, pre-recorded, uh, pre-recorded uh, piano parts, or even just like the recording of like a backing band, they're probably a little bit more inspiring to me versus just like struggling with trying to play uh, the piano um, while also like trying to think of licks that, to, that would fit over it while like not playing in time at all and no rhythm section. I, I find that for me, I guess, I guess the reason that I find, I mean, one, it's way easier to vibe with like real people versus a backtrack because the backing track doesn't care about you and it doesn't respond to you at all. Whereas real people, they're more interplay, so they can get more inspiration. But I find that um, I listen a lot to the drums in order to sort of like get a feel for like, I don't know, if I feel like what I should be doing. I mean, it feels like that's where the style is. Um, that's where the dynamics are. Um, so, and I'm playing things out of time and I can't feel where it is. Um, just kind of trying to maybe imagine it in the abstract. Um, that's a little more uh, challenging. I mean, for me, if I wasn't in front of a camera, I'd probably like think about the chords that I'm playing and walk away. And, and then I'd probably come up with something that's more interesting and be like, oh, hey, check it out. And then I'd write that down. Uh, for one thing, actually, if I was doing this for real, I wouldn't really want to do it on Muse score. I'd want to actually write it down by hand. There's just a certain more sense of a permanence to the information when you're there's a little bit more of a connection to what you're doing mechanically um to what you're thinking of so there's that connection between like mind and body or whatever that makes it a little bit more it makes it stick a little more but for presentation purposes it's it's better for me to do it on muse score because then i could show you what i'm doing and you can hear it and it's a lot more um i guess of a streamlined process uh, in terms of presentation, but um, I think if I was just doing this for my own purposes, I would th maybe listen to like a backing track or something else, or I'd listen to a tune and I'd be like, oh, these are the changes, and I could maybe figure out specifically the voicing that the, the piano is doing or what the bass is doing, you know, all the harmonic elements, um, and then break that down and then be like it's making me think of this lick and i wonder why maybe because you know these notes are in the piano or this note is in the bass and that's just kind of like leads me here to here but this is like the most simplified and abstract version of of what i could be doing um but i guess i'm just sharing this process because maybe it's interesting um or if you're more knowledgeable about this which i don't know who's watching um but it's kind of likely but maybe very unlikely um depending on you know the people who are actually watching um but if you are like if you if you live this stuff and you're like well this is dumb um but i don't know it's just another way of doing it i guess and uh this is something i haven't necessarily tried so anyway uh let's try to come up with one more lick and then i'll stop flapping my gums and go play animal crossing or something flick is on my island today i sold a bunch of bugs um, and my turnip prices are apparently going to be terrible this week. So, if, if you get those good turnip prices, you gotta you gotta find me. You gotta hit me up because uh, I'm trying to build up my island. I'm only two star right now. Anyway, so one more lick. Same exact voicing on the chords. Or do I want to? I could do more borrowing. So maybe I'll keep the D the same. Maybe I'll... Maybe I won't... Maybe I'll hit the... Uh, raised sixth in the key of... Because I did the... I, I did natural nine in D, and we'll do the natural 9 in G, so hit that A natural instead of the A flat. Maybe, maybe that'll be interesting, or maybe it'll be weird. Who knows? So, borrowing from C major again, sort of. Like I was borrowing from C minor earlier. Um, so let's just come up with something that 
something that lands on the A flat so I can really make sort of accent that A flat to A natural. Uh, let's see. And something super simple starting on the that what sounds better god my freaking thing is glitching out it's so annoying to listen to stop it now i like I mean, I don't like, that sounds lame. I'm just trying too hard to hit that A flat. I feel like no, nothing leads to that A flat that doesn't sound lame. I don't know why. Whatever, even if it sounds lame, let's roll with it. Uh, ch -ch -ch -ch, so that's D. Come on, Mu score. That's not right. What I want is. Oh, that's why. Hmm. So, let's see. Solve that. I mean, I could just go to. Uh, I could just end on the third there and not bother to think of anything after that. So we have this sort of 
C major sounding bar. Doesn't really sound like anything. Um, that one but I said I'll do one more um, I think I'm at my wits end with this um, so yeah that is I guess in this case it was it was less like I'm gonna play these chords and be inspired by them uh, and then write down what I what I think Because um, often like if I hear something I in my head I sort of lose it um, sometimes I can lose it pretty quickly um, so I usually have some other device like my phone and like I'll sing it um, I'll listen to it and be like okay that's cool and then I'll go back and figure out what that was um, I figured that might be a little bit tedious for stream um, so I was just kind of you know winging it and punching things into Muse score um, but I guess I, I still achieved my goal of, of, of kind of changing things up and trying to approach it a little differently. Um, in terms of, so Thursday, as I mentioned, you know, I would take some of these and uh, actually practice them and try to transpose them in different keys. Um, what I'll probably do is I'll just come up with completely different ones later when I actually have better ideas uh, that sound cooler to me and learn those. Maybe I'll take some of these, or at least some of the concepts, because, you know, even if these, what I'm coming up with right now is just like, in my soul that's just like the best I could do in the moment even if it's not that good obviously I was thinking about different things I was thinking about you know borrowing from other keys I was thinking about you know sort of leading uh, to the changes which are concepts that are even if I'm applying them in a way that to me it isn't very compelling there are pretty fundamental concepts and, and pretty important to understand so I could still learn something from these, even if they aren't necessarily like cool music. I'm taking this very out of context anyway, um, so I can understand better um, what I should be or how I should be approaching um, building a melody. And I'm doing it out of time, abstractly, so that I can work it out and then eventually uh, internalize it and uh, make it. Uh, produce that automatic response that you need in improvisation um, but yeah so for Thursday um, I probably won't necessarily be playing these maybe I'll vary these up a little bit and I'll, I'll do something based off of these or I'll just think of something entirely different but um, there'll be that and again uh, other things many other things I'm, I'm sort of working out brainstorming uh, putting together for the new future um, We'll see about um, the continuing to stream on YouTube. I don't think I mentioned it at the top, but um, maybe I'll talk about it next next stream. But um, thinking about moving away from YouTube in terms of the streaming, just because it's not the best for music. Because if I play music, then I'll get taken down and things like that. So um, just things that are sort of in the air, uh, ideas that are bubbling around for the future. But I think that about does it for today. My, my mind is, is um, destroyed. Uh, I'm a wreck. Um, but I will see everybody next time. So long.